you ready for an entertainment experience of a lifetime. Knock down, drag out, hard-hitting conversations, debates, and interviews. Well, have you said yes to any of these questions? Sit back, relax, and enjoy something like no other. This is the Isolation Series Podcast, presented by WellBeingsPerformance.com for all your online meeting needs and by ImprintPilates.com Toronto and the Greater Toronto Area's Premier Pilates Studio, also specializing in rehabilitation and athletic conditioning, and finally by GreenStorage.ca Toronto and the Greater Toronto Area's number one self-storage facility. Here now is your host, Spencer Miller. Hey guys, and welcome to this Monday edition of the Isolation Series with me, Spencer Miller. You know that guy by now on the other side of the screen as well. His name is Mr. Pump Palace himself, Paul Shields. And Paul, let's dive right in. I know that we had a special Saturday weekend edition where we talked about uh, the NFL and things like that. First of all, it was another wild week two of NFL action. Most of our predictions came true. Did anything surprise you outside of the fact that the Kansas City Chiefs imploded in the fourth quarter, which is very un-Kansas City Chief-like in the last four or five years. Yeah, I, I would say that was probably the biggest surprise uh, for me this week. They like it, it was as if when the Chiefs got the ball back and they were down one point with, a you know, I think it was less than two minutes left on the clock at that point or just around two minutes left. I thought, well, this game's done. You know, Patrick Mahomes is gonna gonna march down the field and get another and get this team into field goal range, or 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 even better, get a touchdown and, and game done, right? But you got to give credit to the Ravens; their defense played exceptionally well in the second half, and particularly in the fourth quarter. And Lamar Jackson, he was playing like a man with something to prove, particularly in that second half of football. So um, that was probably the biggest surprise of the day for me. Um, I got to watch most of the Chargers and Cowboys game, which was, uh, I, I say surprisingly entertaining, not because I don't think those two teams are any good, but more because it was so close and it was so back and forth that that was an exciting game to watch. But I would say the Ravens were the biggest surprise for me of the day. I also felt like the Seattle game was a very entertaining game at the end as well. Um, and also I was very surprised that the Indianapolis Colts ended up uh, making it as close as they did. It ended up being a much closer game than anticipated, in my opinion, because uh, they were going up against a Rams team that in week one looked unstoppable. And for the majority of the game yesterday, they were up by 11 or 12 points. And then Indy uh, made it close. So, so that surprised me as well. Yeah, I guess the other the other score that really stood out to me excuse me um was the bills just completely blanking the dolphins um you know unfortunate that tua is uh was injured in the game and you know i think we'll probably get some more information on what happened there um later today but you know uh for bills fans that's a really good sign that they were able to bounce back like that and really put a hurt on a division rival so that was very exciting and then the raiders uh to be able to to um, you know, continue the momentum off of last week's win and uh, and beat a Steelers team that looked really good in week one. So a few really interesting storylines, a few games that really caught my attention. I like the San Francisco score too, because very rarely do you see a final score of 17-11 in the National Football League. But when I saw that come across the screen, I was like, oh my goodness, is this the CFL? Yeah, that's uh, it, when you're just looking at the number, that's that is an interesting score for NFL football. Yes. Uh, now, uh, very quickly, let's shift over to uh, the baseball story. Um, the Jays uh, continued their winning ways of winning their seventh straight series. You mentioned that on Saturday. If they could do that, they would win their seventh straight series. They did that. And now they have Robbie Ray going into Tampa again to do a three-game series in Tampa. We know that last week they had a very good showing against Tampa in Toronto. Do you believe that that momentum 
of last week's series will carry over into this week's series? Or do you think that all bets are off again going into this series because Tampa has been so good the majority of the season and they will be playing in their own uh, confines of uh, St. Petersburg this time around? Yeah, the Jays historically don't play very well at that at that uh, at that ballpark in um, as a Tropicana Field. Um, but I you couldn't have a better pitcher to start this series. You couldn't have asked for the schedule to line up any better than this. Um, so I think winning today w- makes is a big big deal. And if they're able to string together another series win, it just, again, gives them some more breathing room. I think the big games coming up are, I mean, of course, every game matters at this point. They have to continue to keep this momentum going. They have to continue playing good baseball. But that series with the Yankees, I think, is going to make or break the season. So if they can, um, if they can avoid uh, getting swept in Tampa Bay, As long as we can get one here, I think that they'll still be in good shape. Um, If they win, you know, they have to win series though. So I don't want to, I want, I would hope that they're going to win this series against the Rays, but the Rays have been so good. They're so good at home and they're a little, they probably got a little, uh, a little annoyance in there, you know, a little bee in their bonnet from losing to the Jays last time. So it wouldn't surprise me if, if this is where the series wins streak ends but you have to bounce back. You have to play well against the twins. You have to play well against the Orioles to finish the year. And the Yankees series, I think is going to make or break this season for the Jays. Be in their bonnet. What is it? 1892 on this Monday edition of the <laughs> isolation series. Uh, well, um, I can't imagine anything worse. Yes. But, uh, <laughs> uh, but the other thing too, is you mentioned that they couldn't ask for a better way to line up than having Robbie Ray start tonight, but also having Alec Manoa start tomorrow. And uh, there is a a pretty good chance that Ross Stripling gets pulled out of the bullpen to start game three on Wednesday because of Hunjin Ryu going on the IL with neck tightness before yesterday's game as Mm -hmm. well. Um, So, you know, having Alec Manoa and Robbie Ray start back to back, that's pretty good. If, Alec Manoa can rein in his emotions. We've seen that he's a pretty good pitcher. It just uh, matters how much he is amped up on the mound. If he can control himself, he is a very effective pitcher. If he goes out and starts being wild right off the get-go, we know that it's hard for him to rein himself in after that point. But yes, you're right. The Jays are in a really good position, at least in the first two games of the three-game series. Yeah, absolutely. So um, tough news about Hunjin Ryu, but hopefully that the rest and, and, and being able to sit down for a little bit as we go through the stretch here, hopefully that, um, you know, cures what ails him as far as what we've seen over the last uh, few weeks where he's just not been himself. He's not been the pitcher that you would like, like to see. Um, and he has been, you know, for, through his time for the Jays. So fingers crossed that he can, you know, bounce back with a little bit of rest. And yeah, I mean, you know, at the end of the day, you want to have your best players playing their best at this time of year. That's what the Blue Jays have. So, you know, fingers crossed, man. I'm, you know, we, we've been unabashedly Jays fans from day one as we started this. So we're going to continue to do that. Um, The, the, The other thing that we need to talk about too, is that, um, starting tonight, the Yankee or the I don't know if it's the Yankees that play the Mets or that Boston plays the Mets uh, tomorrow. One of them plays the Mets. I know that. Um, and then this weekend is a huge series because the Red Sox and the Yankees have their final head-to-head matchup, and you know that that's going to benefit the Jays going into this weekend against Minnesota because. One of those two teams that you're chasing has to lose the series. So they gain ground one way or another there, let's say. So so that I, I'm very intrigued about that because that happens on the weekend. So that could position the Jays extra well uh, come a week from today because, like I said, uh, one of the teams has to lose the majority of that series. Yeah, that's huge, right? And that 
that lines up with the Jays playing against the Twins, who we saw the Jays match up pretty well with, as we saw over the weekend. So if if the Jays can take advantage and win the series against the Twins, one of either the Yankees or Red Sox has to lose two of those three games. So that's a that's a big thing. And it is the Mets or sorry, the Red Sox that have a weird little two game um, two game stretch here with the Mets today and tomorrow. So or sorry, tomorrow and Wednesday. So, um, man, yeah, I mean, it's going to be a race right to the final buzzer, right? The Jays can't let up. Uh, they have to continue winning series. Uh, and, and you have to take advantage of the teams you're supposed to beat. So the Jays are supposed to beat Minnesota. They're supposed to beat Baltimore. They cannot uh, let those series slide. And, you know, I believe that if Robbie Ray goes out to be, and is Robbie Ray again tonight, the Jays win his start tonight, there then becomes no question that he's the front runner now of the Cy Young uh, Award for the American League. Would you agree with that statement as well? Yeah, I think, I mean, if he's not the front runner now, I think that that would, would seal the deal, right? Like he's, his August and September have been so dominant and he's been good all year. So not only has he been putting up great numbers all year and pitching very well, now we're coming into, uh, you know, August and September where he's starting to get the wins that he probably deserved in June and July where he was getting some no decisions. Um, but I, in my mind, he has to be the front runner. But like you said, if not, this this could uh, seal the deal for him. Absolutely. Well, this has been a very quick and compact edition of the isolation series on this Monday. But before we go, I'm going to ask you, Paul, if there's anything else that you would like to mention in today's program, or if we should just end it right there and see what happens in game one of the Tampa uh, J series tonight. Well, Spence, I'd like to, I'd like to mention the fact that we are, uh, as of today's episode, we're going to make our YouTube debut so we are setting up the Isolation Series YouTube page. We want to make sure anyone who, who enjoys watching the podcast has the ability to do so. Um, so as of right now, if you search the Isolation Series on YouTube, you will find us. Um, I'm working on getting us a customized link so that it can be nice and easy to find the Isolation Series. But for now, go, go to your YouTube channel, search the Isolation Series. You will find today's episode uploaded there, and you'll be able to get it on Podbean for those who just want to listen and download to their device. So check us out on now YouTube and podbean.com. Um, and uh, because of that, why don't you mention a little bit, I know that we were talking about it off air a bit, but uh, you were doing some research about the technical issues that we were having and, and we continue to have. Why don't you explain to the people a little bit about the fact that you haven't been able to figure out what the heck is going on other than the fact that uh, other people seem to be having the same issue that we are. Yeah, you know, I'm not I'm not the most technically savvy when it comes to certain uploads and platforms and whatnot. But um, Instagram is having some issues with the long form videos. There, uh, it, it appears that things like Reels and whatnot are uploading fine as of today. You know, Monday the twentieth when we're talking, there was still some some folks having some issues with the up upload. Um, so you know what, it's unfortunate. We'll continue to promote through. Instagram will continue to post things on our Instagram, on my Instagram, on Spencer's Instagram, uh, but it gives us a great opportunity to try something else, right? Gives us a great opportunity to, to head over to YouTube and, um, you know, provide some more content on another platform. So join us on YouTube. We're excited to be there. Absolutely. But for Paul Shield, I am Spencer Miller. This has been another edition of the Isolation Series. We will see you all again tomorrow for another fantastic episode. But as always, like Paul said, we appreciate you watching and or listening, in this case, to the Isolation Series. We'll see you all again tomorrow. Bye-bye. Hey, guys. Thanks once again for tuning in to today's episode of the Isolation Series with me, Spencer Miller, and that guy right over there, Paul Shields. As always, today's show has been brought to you by wellbeingsperformance.com for all your virtual meeting and virtual meet period. Please go to wellbeingperformance.com as well as Barbarian Steakhouse, Toronto and the greater Toronto area's premier steakhouse facility since 1959. For more information, including any new updates on their menu, please go to barbarians.com as well as imprintpilates.com. 
Toronto's premier Pilate studio and greenstorage.ca. Toronto and the Greater Toronto Area's number one self-storage facility. For more information, please go to greenstorage.ca. And Paul, please tell people all about some more whole grain goodness that is us. Folks, be sure to check us out on podbean.com by going to the isolation series.podbean.com. There you'll find the audio only versions of the podcast, including all of our past amazing interviews. One more time, that's the isolation series.podbean.com. And hey, don't forget to follow us on Instagram. It's at V Spencer Miller and at Polly Shields. Polly spelled P A W L Y. So find us on podbean.com, follow us on Instagram, and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And once again, everybody, thank you for watching and or listening and supporting this thing we like to call the Isolation Series. For Paul Shields, I am Spencer Miller, and we will see you again very, very soon.